In this week's episode, there is much head-scratching as the after wall is built attaching the shed to the garage workshop. And with that out of the way, the much simpler standard framed forward wall went up without a hitch. Hi, I'm Bill England of the Ambler Odyssey's YouTube channel. I'm going to build a 48 foot trawler yacht here in the sea clamp boat shed in the backyard of my Summerside Prince Edward Island Canada home. As the boat shed is offset and angled away from the garage, building the aft wall was, let's just say it was fun. The first step was to frame in the port aft or the back left corner. It definitely took some figuring out as the corner was not square and the frame intersected the curve of the first arch. Determining the curved shape of the plywood covering took a little getting used to. In the end, there were only two square frames on the whole aft wall. The starboard aft, or back right corner frame, was a bit larger, but it too burned a few brain cells due to the overhang of the garage roof. The next step was to extend the garage roof to where it intersected the plane of the boat shed. One by fours, acting as purlins, were secured to the existing roof beams, and moving from left to right, each piece was a little bit longer. When working alone, you just never have enough hands. Two by fours formed rafters to connect these extended purlins. Don't be fooled. When a craftsman stands back to admire his workmanship, it is because they're usually thinking, okay genius, how are you going to figure out the next step? for me as I was typically working till after sunset. What do you think that light with its shadows looks like? I'm thinking the new light revealed the ghost in the garage. How else do you explain a door flapping on its own? I have appointed Brogan as my technical advisor. He has always excelled at being a handyman, and it has served him well as he is now on year one of a four-year carpentry apprenticeship program. And he loves it. Something that will also come in handy as we live in a 120-year-old home needing some renovations. Next up is to determine where the roof extension will meet the plane of the first arch of the boat shed. Being too long with this length is okay as the length can always be trimmed. Being too short on the other hand just means more work. There is no 
better way to attach a measuring batten to the end of the ridge beam than having a very agile worker on site. But I'm pretty sure this wouldn't fly on any of his company's job sites. With the batten level and plumb, it will be used to reference the remaining roof extension and end wall build measurements. Picture time! Remember what I said earlier about admiring one's own craftsmanship? <laughs> With the roof extension completed, the vertical frames to the exterior of the arch could be measured, cut, and installed. On the aft end wall there are very few measurements that are the same, and these vertical frames are no exception.
Once each piece is plumb, the length is measured between the arch and the A-frame. The bottom of the frame piece is cut to match the slope of the A-frame. After being clamped in place, the top of the frame piece is scribed with the curvature of the arch. This will allow a notch to be cut so that the frame fits snugly against and below the arch. With both ends cut and a good fit, the frame is secured in place, or attempted to be secured. Apparently I need practice at my skew nailing, but fourth time's a charm! The frames are spaced the standard 16 inches on center, so I used a jig cut to 14 and a half inches to mark the start location for the next frame. A level ensured frames would be parallel and the jig was slid down to where it met the arch. The frame pieces that also overlap the collar ties had two notch depths to measure and cut, one for the arch and one for the collar tie itself. This took a bit more grey matter to figure out, but came out pretty good I think. With the framing completed, now it was on to cutting plywood to match the slope of the A-frame and the curve of the arch, and also lining up on the framing. Oh, to cut something straight and square again.
as the plastic cover would fold over the top side of the outside of the plywood end wall, the corner edge of each piece was rounded over to hopefully prevent the plastic from chafing and ripping. My wish to finally cut straight and square finally came true when I shifted to the forward end wall. Like working in the snow, let it snow, let it snow. Hey cat, where are you? Where's my worker? There you are. I think you'll probably like it better once we get the cover on, right? Yeah. After a quick trip to the pumpkin patch for some lumber, the forward end wall was started. An eight foot opening is left for doors to facilitate loading lumber and larger equipment into the boat shed. A header beam of double two by eights runs along the top of the lower framing, helping to carry the load of the end wall, especially above the eight foot door opening. On to do the forward upper framing. Cut one in, one cut, a whole bunch to do. Come along. Doing 16 inch on center for the framing. Except when I make a slight measurement there, like that last one is about half an inch in each off. I can live with that. Well, just lining um, that frame up, frame on the lower wall, measuring 57 inches. I cut to that length, I'll go back up, describe uh, the arc from the arch. Come down, cut that notch, and she's good to go. Having, quote, perfected, end quote, cutting arch notches for the aft end wall, things went much faster on this end. That's the notch. The arch comes up through here. And then this, uh, put a bolt through it into a spacer block if it lines up with a spacer block. Otherwise, she'll just get screwed in.
just because nothing should be straightforward on this boat shed project, I aimed to use as much off-cut plywood on hand to reduce the new sheets of plywood I needed to buy. During COVID, the price of lumber increased significantly. A sheet of 3 8 inch standard ply was about $10 more than just nine months earlier. No better way to finish off the end walls than doing it after our first big snowfall. That being said, I'm very happy with how the walls turned out, especially that crazy after wall connecting to the garage. Building a boat should be easy after this. In the next episode, the roof extension is shingled in the snow, battens are added to the exterior, and the boat shed gets its plastic cover. Front row seat on this boat build project. Please like and subscribe to the Ambler Odysseys on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.